Hello and welcome to the next video. So in this video, I'm just going to demonstrate the basics of creating a rule file and putting in the first couple of commands in CGA in order to get us off the ground. In the last video, I showed you all the CGA reference material and I'm probably going to refer back to that. So in order to use the rule files, the first thing we need is some sort of shape. We could either import vector data from something like ArcGIS Pro and use that. However, I'm just going to create a basic shape for this demo. So as you can see, I've created the footprint to a building. Um, and if I was going to use um, polygonal modeling, I would then lift that up using these tools here and build that 3D. However, we're going to get the rule file to do all the work. So the first thing I need is a new rule file. So in order to create that, easiest way to do it is to go to your project in the navigator pane to right click on rules go to new and then we're looking at cga rule file here we can give the rule file an appropriate name and then just press enter we'll press finish okay so that's created a new rule file we can see it open up in this uh, window on the top left and that's going to get quite hard to work with if we um, write too big a rule file it's going to become quite unmanageable quite quickly so i'm going to go ahead and change the layout to the rule programming layout so if you remember how to do that we go window layout and then rule program and layout that moves things around on our screens and just makes it a bit easier so our 3d view has got slightly smaller we're not too interested in where what's happening here we'll just use that to make sure our rule has worked so we've got our blank cga rule file here ready to go and then behind that, we've got the table of contents in the scene. And if we go over to the right hand side, we've still got this inspector window that will show these attributes that I'll talk about in a second. And then behind that, we've got the navigator pane. So you can still find everything, just takes some getting used to. Okay, so within the rule file itself, uh, inside these forward slashes, we've got the header of the rule file. So this tells us the name of the rule file, when it was created, the author, and we could add in uh, more information if we wanted, and we could lay that out quite nicely. Perhaps we could put some comments in there. And this might make it easy if we come back to that rule in the future, or perhaps someone else takes over the task, just to put some good comments in there. Below that, it tells us the version uh, for this rule file. And then from there on, it's up to us to create these rules. Now. We don't have to completely start from a blank, uh, you know, blank canvas. We can copy and paste from other rule files. So if we go to the Esri library, uh, we look at rules and perhaps we look at some of the building rules. We can look at their rule files and this can be uh, pretty scary when you first look at it. However, as time goes on and you start to look through these, they'll make more and more sense. We can see where things have been commented out in green. We can see the layout of their rules that have uh, attributes towards the top and then perhaps some default values that they're going to use throughout and then uh, the individual rules as they continue. Okay, so we'll close that down for now. So the first thing you're going to see in a lot of rules is called the start rule and this takes that initial shape and uh, does the first thing to it. Often when you look through the examples, um, the Esri examples, you'll see this um, will look like this. It will be called a lot. When you copy and paste a lot of the rules from Esri, you'll see this a lot all the time. But I like to think of this as the, the shape of the initial rule. So I'm going to call mine something like footprint. So that's our start rule. And we're going to do something to that rule. So I talked about extrude in the last, um, in the last demo. And I think we went on to the CGA reference and we went and found extrude. So let's go and do that. So here we've got lot, uh, and then we've got extrude 10. So as I said, I'm just gonna copy and paste that into City Engine. So I've copy and pasted that in, and I've got no red X. If I uh, remove that space there, you'll notice when there's a mistake with the rule, you'll get this red X on the left-hand side, and that tells you something has gone wrong. So it's quite forgiven in that respect. Okay, now I've made changes to this rule file. At the top, we can see there's a little star. 
So I need to save that. And the best ways to do it is Control and S, and the star will disappear. And then nothing's happened to my building yet, and that's because there's no rule file assigned to that building. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that rule file to the building. So I've clicked on the building. I'm going to go CGA, and I'm going to assign demo to that building. So the rule is now assigned to the building. Nothing should happen until I press generate. And there we go. The building has popped up uh, 10 meters. So as we carry along uh, in this process, it's useful to start to put in some comments. Um, and we can add a comment in just to make it easier self for if we come back later. So a couple of ways you can do that. Um, you can put a hash in and then that will hash out the rest of that line. You could add a comment. And it's just useful to do that to sort of know what you've done and if someone takes over later. So I could say that uh, this rule extrudes the building by 10 meters. Okay. So I've extruded my building by 10 meters. And the next thing I can do is add uh, a new rule. So this extruded building will be called something else. So I'm gonna call it building because it was a footprint. It was extruded by 10 meters and now it's called building. And straight away, you'll notice I get a little warning on the left hand side. And that says there's an undefined rule. So I've got my start rule. That extrudes the building by 10 meters. I've called that building, but building is undefined. It hasn't been used. So I need to go ahead and use that. Okay, so the next thing I can do is create a building rule. And you'll see this process just starts to, to carry on. So I've now added a building rule. And I can do something with that building. So at the moment, my building rule isn't doing anything. And I have a red X. So I'm going to give that building a color. So there's a couple of different ways we can do color. Uh, this method uses RGB values. If you go back onto the CGA reference and you go all the way down to color, there's a lot of information in there on all the different methods we can use to display colors. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do control S and then control G. We notice the building has now gone red because I've assigned that color. Okay, so the next thing I might want to do is start to tidy up my rule file a bit. So one of the ways I can do that is I can add attributes. So at the moment, we can see uh, this information that the building is 10 meters. However, if any user is gonna use this rule file, they don't know the building is 10 meters. So one of the ways we can fix that is with attributes. So for this height, which is 10 meters, I can add an attribute. To do that, it would be attribute. I would call that attribute height. I could go equals 10. And at the moment, that's undefined because no one's used the height. So I'm going to delete the 10 and I'm going to call it height. Now, if I do control S and control G, the building height has not changed. However, now any users of the software can see that it says 10 here. So if I'm now a user and I'm not uh, up to speed with the programming language, I can now change the height manually and the building height will change. However, the attribute height, the default setting won't change. OK, so I'm going to finish this demo up now. I'm going to save this and upload this to YouTube. And then I'm going to make a second version where I talk about splitting the building into its individual walls and adding a gable roof before I go into an explanation of my rule file. OK, thanks for listening and stay tuned for future demos.